Yo guys, welcome to the Zelda Fiction. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with Fem Sasuke, Hinata and Fem Haku. Part 3. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. NAM arrived and Kakashi poofed onto training ground 7 to meet his potential team. Yo. He greeted with an eye smile, only to receive no answer. He opened his eye to see that he was the only one there. Um, where could my cute little Genin be? He asked in a lazy tone. He looked around for a few minutes before shrugging and taking a seat on a nearby boulder. He pulled out his little book and started to giggle as he enjoyed his literature. Fifteen minutes later. Boy. Can't you be a decent human being and read that thing indoors? Naruto chided as he and the girl shunshined onto the field. Without taking his eye off his book, the scarecrow answered. Well I needed something to pass the time. I thought I told you all to be here at seven. He then listened for the telltale signs of hunger, but the tummies were silent and to not eat anything. Sayumi snorted, yeah right. We learned our lesson about your time management, or lack thereof, from yesterday. We weren't about to go through that again. Plus, you only suggested that we weren't to eat any breakfast, it was never a direct order. Hinata added. Hmm. I guess you're right. The Jonin then snapped his book shut and placed it in his pocket before getting up and dusting off his pants. Well now that we're all here, I think it's time we get this show on the road. He then took two bells from his pocket and held them up for them to see. To pass this test, all you have to do is take one of these bells from me. Originally whoever didn't get a bell was gonna be tied to one of those stumps behind me and left without lunch. But since you all went and ate already, the new punishment will be that whoever doesn't have a bell will be stripped of his or her headband and sent back to the academy. He finished with his eye smile. He said that part a little too cheery for the genin's liking. Also as a bit of advice, best to come at me with the intent to kill. You won't have a chance to pass otherwise. He then put the bells on his waist. You all understand the objective. All three nodded and got into ready stances. Bakashi looked at all three of them intently, before. You have two hours. Hajim. All three vanished from sight, leaving the silver-haired scarecrow alone on the field. I have to actually put some effort into finding them. Very impressive. He once again pulled out his piece of literature and began to read. Now then, let's see who attacks first. Up in the trees, two of the genin hopefuls were watching their sensei. And there he goes again with his smut. Remind me to burn that thing when I get the chance. Oh don't worry, one each hand, you'll get your chance sooner than you think. The blonde answered as he rubbed his chin and thought. You already figured out the true meaning behind the so-called test, right? Sayumi nodded and answered. Yeah. He gave us an objective that divides us when we really should work together to complete it. My thoughts exactly. If we want to pass this thing, then we'll need Hinata. Sayumi nodded. Agreed. They then took off to find their last teammate. From her spot in the trees, Hinata watched as her sensei kept his lone eye on his book and was giggling like a madman. Seriously sensei. She thought incredulously. She then turned her thoughts away from that and back to the ongoing test. He said that the only way to pass was to get a bell from him, but he only has two. So anyway I look at it, someone is going back to the academy. But that doesn't make sense. Unless a member was seriously injured or killed, there are no official three-man cells in Kanoha. Plus he's a jonin, they can't expect a single genin to take on a jonin, unless a light bulb appeared above her head. He wants us to work together. I have to find Narukun and Sayumi. Ask and you shall receive. A voice said from behind her. Anada turned around and saw Sayumi and Naruto land on some branches just in front of her. So I take it you found out the true meaning behind this test as well. She asked them. Both of them nodded. Now that we know what the true objective is, let's pass this test. Naruto declared. Bakashi flipped through another page of his book and began to read. Hmm, 45 minutes and still no sign of them. I wonder if any of them figured out the true meaning behind this test yet. As that thought crossed his mind, he noticed that his blonde student had shunshined onto the field and was only about 10 feet away from him. Finally decided to take a crack at me, huh? Took you long enough, I'm almost done with my book here. The man said, as he glanced over his book and at the gen in hopeful. Naruto cracked his knuckles and rolled his neck a few times before settling in his stance. He sent chakra to his fingernails, and they turned from normal fingernails into fox-like claws. He leaned his upper body forward, and his clawed hands were open at his sides. His legs were apart with one bent in front of the other. Yeah, I wanted to see how I measured up against the great copy ninja. Is that so? Without putting his book away, he gestured with his free hand for the boy to come at him. Well then, let's see what you can do. On that note, Naruto gave the Jonin a smirk, before he launched from his position and kicked up a sizable amount of dust and dirt. Bakashi's lone eye momentarily widened at the display of speed, before he brought his hand up just in time to block the incoming kick. 
A shockwave rang through the field and pushed back the surrounding vegetation. Bakashi winced as he could feel the bones in his hand straining from that single blow. Guess I'll have to take this seriously. He then grabbed the teen's ankle and threw him across the field to create some space. Naruto did a few flips while in midair before landing in a crouch. He looked up and grinned when he saw Kakashi flashing his hand and putting his book away. Gonna take me seriously now, Kakashi-sensei. Kakashi settled into his fighting stance and answered. Not like you left me with much of a choice. Naruto's grin didn't leave his face. Damn straight. Once again Naruto charged at the jonin, but this time there was a faint wall glow around him. But Sayumi and Hinata. The two heiresses watched the ongoing fight and were pleased with what they were seeing. Despite having more experience than the blonde, they could see that Naruto was keeping the jonin on his toes and wouldn't let him make a single mistake. They saw the grin that threatened to split the blonde's face in two as he matched the sliver-haired man blow for blow. He's having way too much fun with this. Both girls thought with a slight chuckle. Sayumi glanced at the Hyuga heiress and said. Alright, he's keeping him busy. My part is coming up soon, so go get ready. Hinata nodded before taking off to another part of the training ground. Sayumi continued to watch the fight and watched as Naruto lured Kakashi near to the lake before slipping behind the cyclops and locking the man's hands behind his head and kicked his feet out to keep him restrained. Sayumi then looked at the figure crouching behind her. Ready, Atado. You know it, one chan Back with Naruto and Kakashi. Kakashi struggled to get free as the blonde Jinchuriki kept him restrained. Now Kakashi would be the first to admit that while he was a proficient hand-to-hand -hand fighter, he wasn't the best. But he thought that he could at least take on a graduate without much trouble. This is what I get for underestimating him. The guys will never let me live this down if they find out I got bested by a genin. A few seconds later he watched from his position as Sayumi made her appearance on the field alongside Naruto. That position suits you, Kakashi-sensei. The Naruto beside Sayumi taunted with a beepy grin. As he continued to struggle against the Naruto holding him, he finally realized the situation. I see. So all this time I've been fighting a clone. Yep. Both of the Naruto's answered. Now why don't you relinquish those bells to us and we'll let you go. Sayumi said as she folded her arms under her bust. So you figured out the point to the test, huh? The Jonin said as he began to charge himself up with Raten Chakra. He then released the built-up chakra all in one go, electrocuting the clone, and made lightning to dance along his body. That just means that I'll have to do better to keep the bells from you. He once again got into his stance. Sayumi shrugged in response. Can't say we didn't try to negotiate. She then took a deep breath and thought, Katen. Kyanomber. She blew a volley of cannonball-sized fireballs from her mouth that were now hurtling toward the cyclops. Not done yet. Naruto called out before he clapped his hands together, Futen. Rapusho. Gale force winds were added to the fireballs, increasing their size and intensity. Bakashi watched the collaboration with admiration hidden behind his mask. Not bad. He then quickly flew through his own hand seals and slammed his palms on the ground, Doton. Doryuheki. Three walls sprung up in front of him and then. Boom. The training ground shook as the first fireball impacted the first wall, followed by another and then another. The fireballs tore through the first two walls until only the last one was left standing. Kakashi began to sweat as he pushed more chakra into the wall to make it withstand the onslaught. Finally the volley stopped and Kakashi ceased the flow of chakra to the wall and blew a breath of relief. Damn, guess this is what I get for telling them to try and kill me. He then started to feel heat lots of it. He lifted his head and saw that the wall in front of him was beginning to glow red and he could feel the immense heat it was emitting. Yo, sensei. He heard Sayumi call. Mind telling us what happens when certain types of rocks are superheated. Sweat trickled down Kakashi's brow and his eye widened. Shit. He quickly jumped away as the wall erupted in an explosion and the shockwave pushed him farther than he intended to jump. The jonin grunted in pain as fragments of the destroyed wall lodged into his side. He landed on the lake surface in a crouch and held his bleeding side. First that white aura around Naruto and now whatever Sayumi did to that wall. What the hell did that biju teach them? He then felt something cold and wet snake around his ankle. Looking down he saw a tentacle of water wrapped tightly around his ankle. Crap. Before he could react, more water tentacles erupted from the lake and wrapped around him, his legs, arms, torso and around his neck. He was completely immobile. He then felt another one reach for his waist and took the bells. Here, Nerukun and Sayumi. He heard a soft voice call from behind him. He watched as the tentacle threw the bells at the two in mention. Thanks, Hina-chan. They answered as they caught the bells. From the corner of his eye, Kakashi could see Hinata standing on the water behind him while holding the snake hand seal. Good job, Hinata. It went exactly as planned. Sayumi called out. 
Inada smiled and nodded before dropping her technique and releasing the jonin. Bakashi let himself fall to his knees and took a breath. Okay, it's time I started to train again. I'm obviously out of practice if three genin can take me down like that. It seems like we win, Kakashi-sensei. Naruto said with the girls nodding in agreement. Oh really? He responded in a questioning tone as he got to his feet, still holding his bleeding side. You want me to take a look at that, sensei? I know a little Irio ninjutsu that could help. Hinata offered. Bakashi I smiled at the offer before waving it off. That's alright, Hinata. Compared to injuries I've gotten before, this is but a scratch. I'll patch myself up after we conclude the test. But we already finished the test, plus we know that the true meaning behind it was teamwork. Sayumi pointed out. That is true. You all did a splendid job in working together to get the bells for me, but my earlier rule still stands, whoever doesn't have a bell will be sent back to the academy. So what are you gonna do? The three genin hopefuls stood there in silence as they thought of what to do. Naruto looked at Sayumi and the bell she had. He wasn't about to make her give it up. So he looked at his bell and then at Hinata before a thought came to mind. All he said was that we all needed a bell, he never said anything about splitting one. I say, no one goes back. The whiskered teen said before he held the bell between his thumb and index finger. His fingers glowed white for a few moments before they heard the brief sound of metal being cut. The next thing they knew, the bell parted into two equal halves, and Naruto tossed one half to Hinata. And just like that we all have a bell. So do we pass now? The blonde asked in a snarky tone with a tilt of his head. Bakashi lightly chuckled at the blonde's method of sharing the bell. That you do. Well congratulations, we are now officially Team 7. Report at 7 a.m. tomorrow at the Hokage Tower to begin our missions. The now official members of Team 7 all nodded. Hinata then raised her hand. Yes Hinata. Kakashi acknowledged. What was the point of us finding out the real objective of this test when we still needed the bells, which were proven to be just a mere distraction? Hinata asked. Sayumi and Naruto looked at the jonin for an answer, since they were curious about that as well. Bakashi nodded in understanding before explaining. The reason for this was to see how loyal you were to your team. All of you worked well together to complete the task, which was to get the bells from me, but then you were faced with a decision. All three of you needed a bell to continue, but there were only two of them. What do you do, sacrifice one of your teammates to move forward on your own, or find a way to make sure that all of you make it through? In other words, you wanted to see if we would leave our teammate behind. Sayumi deduced. Bingo. He then gestured for them to follow him. Follow me, I want to show you all something. He then led them a little ways to the back of the training ground. This is where the new team saw a kunai-shaped structure. Kakashi walked up to and stood in front of the structure. His team walked up behind him and stood in silence. This is the Konoha Memorial. The names of those who have fallen in service of the village gets engraved on this stone. My comrade, an Ichiha that was on my genin team, fell in battle protecting me and my other teammate. Before he died, he left me with two things that I hold dear. He then lifted his headband to show his eye. This Sharingan that he wished to live on with me. And these words. The masked nin then put his headband back in place and looked up to the sky. Those who break the rules are scum, but those who would abandon even one of their friends are worse than scum. He then turned around and faced his team. You three are the only ones who have ever figured out the meaning to my test. Naruto put on a beepy smirk, heh. Were you expecting any less? Bakashi's eye smile reappeared. I guess not. That concludes today. Remember to report at the Hokage Tower tomorrow to begin our mission. Oh and before I forget. Naruto, Sayumi, Hokage-sama wishes to speak with you both in an hour from now. The two in mention nodded once again. The jonin took a second glance at Sayumi, and he could have sworn there was a ghost of a smirk on her face for a few moments. Not thinking too much about it, the cyclops then gave his students a two-fingered salute, Jan. Before he shunshined away. Naruto looked at his teammates and said. Well team, how about some Ichiraku Raymond to celebrate officially becoming Jenin? Nice try, Ataudo. Once a week remember, besides, we're going to go to that cafe Hinata loves so she can get her fix on cinnamon buns. Naruto deflated and Hinata turned away and grumbled under her breath, I don't love them that much. Without missing a beat, yes, you do. Her teammates responded teasingly. Hinata's cheeks took on a slight pink hue, and she pouted in embarrassment. Meanies. The trio of teens had a good chuckle at that before they moved to leave the training ground. Sayumi looked at the little souvenir Hinata got for her. I wonder when he'll realize that his precious is missing. Before going to give his report, Kakashi stopped and dislodged a few fragments in his side and then used the little knowledge of Irio Ninjutsu he knew to close the wound. That's better. He then shunshined once again and appeared just outside the office door. He walked inside and found the other senseis giving their reports. Team 1, fail. Team 2, fail. 
Team 3, passed, but they will need a lot of work to be effective. Team 4, fail. Team 5, passed. Team 6, passed. Everyone then turned around and took note of Kakashi, as well as the blood on his jacket. Most were silently surprised that the copy ninja actually got injured testing three new genin. Team 7, passed. Now that was a shocker. It was a wide known fact that Kakashi failed every single team he had gotten before. It seems you got a good team this time, Kakashi. If you don't mind me asking, how did you get that wound? Here is an inquired. I caught some shrapnel from a wall they blew up. Nothing serious and I already took care of the injury. The masked man responded. Very well then. Now moving on. Hiruzen said before he motioned for Kuranite to speak. Team 8, passed. Sakura's going to need some work though. Team 10, passed. Well, that's that. Be sure to take good care of your teams and train them well. You're all dismissed. Hiruzen spoke. With the rest of the Jonin gone Hiruzen asked Kakashi, did they get my message? Hi, Hokage-sama. They'll be here in an hour's time. The Jonin responded. Good. You're dismissed. With Kakashi gone he leaned back into his chair, mentally preparing himself for the upcoming conversation. Instead of flickering directly to his house, Kakashi decided to take the slow route and walk. As he was walking by he saw the bar known as the Broken Katana that was frequented by Jonin. With a shrug he decided to stop in and get a drink. When he walked in he found his fellow team leaders, Asuma and Kurenai there as well. Hey there, Kakashi. You here to get a drink for finally passing a team. Asuma called out. Kakashi ordered his drink before going to sit with the other team leaders. Something like that. He then took a swig of his drink. Dot with the mask still in place. Asuma glanced at Kurenai, gain jutsu, right? Kurenai responded with a small shrug, most likely. Kakashi set his drink on the table and said. Keep guessing guys. So you mind telling me how your tests went? Kurenai spoke first. My team did well, albeit with a little difficulty here and there. I gave them the standard bell test. Kiba and Shino tracked me down, and along with Sakura, they kept me distracted, while Shino's insects took the bells off me. Where the difficulty came in however, was that it took them an hour and 40 minutes out of the 2 hour time limit for them to finally make a move, and that was due to Kiba and Sakura refusing to cooperate with each other. It took Shino's logical thinking to convince them to work together, and even then the boys did majority of the work. You sound disappointed. Asuma remarked. Kurenai closed her eyes and rubbed the bridge of her nose. I am. As a jonin kinoichi, I find it a little disheartening whenever I see upcoming kinoichi have to rely so heavily on their male counterparts. Don't get me wrong, I admire it when young men are capable of taking the lead and doing what is needed to be done, but I also like to see when the kinoichi are able to stand side by side with them and can be relied on equally. Both shinobi nodded in understanding. I kind of have the same issue you do, with Eno. For my test I told them that they had to get my pack of cigs. Answer sticks. Kurenai interjected. Asuma gave her a pointed look before continuing, anyway, as I was saying. I told them that for them to pass, they had to take my pack of cigs from me, plus the one I was already smoking. As expected they worked together right from the get-go. Not exactly a surprise given the families they come from. It took them an hour for them to find me, Choji was the first one to attack with a frontal assault, while Lino stayed at a distance and used her throwing weapons. What I realized was that they were luring me to the shadowy part of the training ground where Shikamaru managed to catch me in his shadow strangle. If you knew their strategy, why did you purposefully take the bait? Kurenai asked. And make it impossible for them? Asuma replied with a small laugh. Our job was to see if they could work together efficiently. Not to see if they could take down a fully-fledged jonin in combat. He responded and Kurenai nodded in understanding. Well the issue I have with Ino is aside from her mediocre to jutsu and her throwing weapons, she doesn't have anything else to rely on aside from her clan jutsu, and if that misses, then her teammates have the burden of protecting her until her consciousness makes it back to her body. You guys have your work cut out for you with those two. Kakashi commented as he took another sip of his drink. So we told you about our tests, mind going into detail about how a group of genin managed to wound you. Asuma said with a small chuckle while Kurenai looked intrigued. Kakashi laughed nervously, he, it wasn't anything special. Nothing to write home about. Kurenai wagged her finger at the silver-haired shinobi. Ah, ah, ah. You're not getting out of this so easy, Kakashi. We told you ours, now it's time to tell us yours. That was the deal. When did we make that deal? Kakashi asked with a raised eyebrow. Just now. Asuma quickly answered. Kakashi hung his head and groaned. Okay fine. I'll tell you. He then spent the next few minutes recounting the events of his genin test. Asuma's shoulders were moving up and down as he contained his laughter, while Kurenai had her hand over her mouth to suppress her amusement. 
Never thought I'd see the day when three genin would give the great Kakashi of the Sharingan so much trouble. Asuma said in between his laughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah laugh it up. At the very least it made me realize something. Kakashi said as he took another sip of his drink. Gurunai calmed down from her laughter and asked. What is that? I got complacent in my skills. Losing that badly to a team of genin, even if I wasn't going all out. It was the kick in the ass I needed to see that my skills need some re-sharpening. That I can agree with. Asuma chimed in. You said that Naruto had a white glow around him when he faced you. The Kashi nodded. It was more along the lines of a white outline, but yeah. And that his attack seemed to cut through the air with little resistance. That's what it seemed like to me. Kakashi replied. I think I know what the kid did. You see, the white glow that was around him, that was the kid using a thin layer of wind chakra to coat his body, and what this did was to reduce his wind resistance, allowing his attacks to move faster through the air. So basically it constantly emulates a streamlined posture for him. You sure about that? Kurinai asked. Asuma shrugged. It's a possibility. As a wind user myself, it's something I've done a few times, so I recognize Kakashi's description. But then again it could be something else that's just similar to what I do. Even if it's not what you described, Asuma, it's still very impressive for a genin to be able to use elemental manipulation of that level. And from what you told us, both Sayumi and Hinata also know how to use elemental manipulation on a decent level as well. I think it's safe say that of the three of us, you've got the strongest team, Kakashi. Hinata surprised me though. Gurunai remarked as she took a sip of her drink with Asuma doing the same. How so? Asuma asked. Well I was originally supposed to look after Hinata as a request from Hiashi. The guy may seem like a cold prick with more than a few logs up his ass, but he does care about his daughter, and he saw the damage he did to her. So he wanted me to come in to try and pick up the pieces and make Hinata whole again. But a year and a half ago before I could begin my task, he told me that he will no longer require my services, and that Hinata was already taken by someone else. He didn't tell me who though, only that she was in good hands, and given who Hinata is today, it's safe to say that this person did a good job. It's the same person who trained Naruto and Sayumi. Kakashi spoke up. Asuma and Kurinai looked at him and Gain Jutsu Mistress asked, you know who this person is? Yes. Before they could ask him who it was, he spoke up again. I know that you're curious about who it is, but I'm not allowed to say since Hokage-sama swore me to secrecy. Just know that he is an ally to the village, and Hokage-sama trusts him. If Pops trusts him, then that's good enough for me. Asuma said as he took the final swig of his drink with Kurinai and Kakashi doing the same. They paid for their drinks before they left the bar. See you around, Kakashi. Asuma said to the scarecrow and they went their separate ways. Kakashi was once again taking the slow route to his house. He reached into his pocket for his book but didn't find it. His eye widened and fear gripped him as he searched the pocket again but didn't find it. He chuckled nervously and thought, he, no worries. I must have put it in the other pocket. He searched his other pocket but still didn't find it. Where is it? Where is it? Bakashi began to frantically search for it on his person, making the passers-by wonder if he was having some sort of episode. Kakashi suddenly stopped in his tracks and recalled the smirk Sayumi had before he left. She took my book. Thunder and lightning flashed around him as he fell to his knees, with animated tears streaming down his face and a dark cloud raining over his head. She took my book. He cried out. The passers-by all stopped to look at the hysterical Jonin with floating question marks above their heads and confused expressions on their faces, wondering if he's alright. An hour passed and the door to Hiruzen's office was pushed open and in walked his guests. The old man dismissed his anbu and quickly put up a silencing barrier. The teens noticed their leader's actions and realized that whatever he called them for must be serious. Please take a seat. Naruto and Sayumi silently sat down. Now before I get into what I called you here for, let me congratulate you on becoming Genin. I was watching your fight through my crystal ball, and I have to say that I am impressed with how you handled the test. The man praised. Naruto had the decency to look flustered thanks, old man. Sayumi responded with a quick, thank you, Hokage-sama. Hiruzen nodded. Well it is best not to tarry. He then took a deep breath. I wanted to inform you of something that I left off three years ago when I informed you of Karama-san. There was a sudden poof and Karama was now there and accounted for. You rang, old shadow. I was just about to speak to Naruto here. Karama nodded and gestured for him to continue. You see, Naruto, your parents died on the night of the attack defending you against Karama here. Before they died they left someone who was to take care of you in the event that they couldn't. I have a godparent. Naruto deduced. Yes you do. A godfather. Here is in clarified. This godfather, he wouldn't happen to be Jiraiya of the Sanin, would he? The boy asked seemingly out of the blue. Hiruzen had to contain his surprise. 
Um, why yes Naruto kun. That's him. And my folks, they wouldn't happen to be Minato Namikaze, aka, the Yellow Flash and his wife, Kishina Yuzumaki Namikaze, would they? The blonde teen asked and was silently enjoying the look of shock on the old man's face. Girazin whipped around his head and gave Kurama a pointed stare. You told him. You may have been bound by your word to not tell the kid about his heritage. I wasn't. The beast answered with not a hint of shame in his tone. Don't beat yourself up over it, old man. I already figured out that you left something out of your explanation from three years ago. You never do anything without a reason, so I decided to wait and see if you would tell me willingly or if I would need to demand some answers. Naruto explained before he pointed a thumb at Kurama. And Nikki here just decided to do it for you. Only he went a step further. Garazin raised an eyebrow at that last sentence. What do you mean by, he went a step further? I met them. Was Naruto's reply. What? Hiruzen exclaimed. After Kurama, Sayumi and Naruto checked to see if their ears were still functioning, Naruto answered. Yep. But how? The old man inquired. Naruto put a hand under his chin. Well. Flashback a month after the attack. Sayumi and Naruto were making their way onto the field to begin their day of training with Kurama. As they got closer to their spot, they could see the red-haired beast. He was at the lake shore with his hands folded and his back turned to them. They couldn't see it, but he also had a serious expression on his face. Yo, Kurama. He heard his students greet, but he didn't answer, he just kept his gaze on the rippling water in the lake. Sayumi and Naruto shared a look with each other before looking back at Kurama. It's the first time they've ever seen him like this. It is time. Now they were both concerned and confused. What do you mean, Kurama? Naruto asked. Kurama closed his eyes and sighed deeply before turning to face the duo, his hands still folded. It is time. Time for you to know the full truth, Naruto. Okay, you're starting to scare us, furball. What the hell are you talking about? Sayumi asked. Without giving a response, Kurama just stuck his hands into his jacket pockets and started to walk toward the surrounding forest. He glanced over his shoulder to see his students gazing at him with worried confused expressions. Follow me. He said before continuing his trek. Naruto and Sayumi shared a glance at each other before shrugging and began to follow the retreat. They walked for about 10 minutes, and Naruto and Sayumi noticed how deep in the forest they were. They've never been this far into the forest before as they always stayed out on the field, since that is where they trained. Not long after, they could see a huge set of walls coming into view, and at the center was a silver gate. The closer they got, the more they could make out what was on the gate. It had two initials, M on the left side of the gate and K on the right side. Naruto didn't know why, but he started to have conflicted feelings. On one hand, he began to feel at ease, as if this was a place where he belonged, but on the other hand, he was feeling apprehensive. He didn't even notice that he was trembling until Sayumi grabbed his hand and made him look at her. Naruto, are you okay? You were trembling like a leaf just now. She asked with concern in her tone. I I was. Yeah. What happened? I don't know. It's just something about this place. It made me feel all weird inside. Garama listened in on the little conversation and couldn't help but feel guilty. Soon, Kit. They walked until Kurama brought them to a halt right outside the gates. Unable to contain his curiosity any longer, Naruto finally asked. Okay Kurama, where are we? Home. He then turned around and looked at Naruto. Or to be more specific, your home. Hold on. Sayumi spoke from her spot beside Naruto. Are you saying that this is where his parents lived? Yes. Then who were they? Naruto asked. It's best if you ask them that yourself. Huh? The teens gave out with question marks over their heads. Make two shadow clones. I'll deal with the rest. Why? The blonde asked. Just do it. The beast snapped back, clearly not in the mood to waste time. Naruto glanced at Sayumi who gave him a nod. He then made the cross seal, and there was a puff of smoke. Instead of seeing two replicas of himself, there stood a man with spiky blonde hair similar to his own, that fell over his blue hit I-8. He had blue eyes, much like Naruto's, and he was wearing the standard Kanoha Jonin outfit, with the added clothing of a white, high-collared battle coat with red flames at the base, and the kanji of 4th Hokage going down the middle in red symbols. Beside the man was a beautiful, fair-skinned woman with thigh-length red hair and violet eyes. She wore a white, high-collared, sleeveless blouse underneath a green loose-fitting dress and the standard shinobi sandals. Naruto and Sayumi both went wide-eyed. Yondai Mei Sama. Sayumi thought before she turned her eyes and looked at the woman. And that's his wife, Kishina Namikaze. But how are they here? They both died on the night of the attack. Naruto stood there in silence, just staring at them. He knew who they were, the Yondai Mei and his wife who both died on the night of the attack. Whenever they would show up in the books he's read, he'd always feel a knot in his stomach, as if he should know them on a deeper level. 
He would always push away that feeling and chalk it up to his desire of wanting parents messing with him. But now. Now that they were standing right there in front of him, that desire resurfaced, only it was a hundred times stronger. He had to actively fight back the urge to run and tackle them in a hug. Git. Kurama started, gaining everyone's attention. Allow me to introduce to you. Minato Namikaze and his wife, Kishina Yuzumaki. Both teens' eyes widened even more upon hearing that name, Yuzumaki. Namikaze. Your parents, Naruto. A pin could hit the floor, and it would sound like a cannon went off due to how silent it was. Sayumi couldn't keep the look of disbelief off her face. His parents. She then looked at the two and then looked back at Naruto. Minus the whisker marks and the eye structure that he got from his mom, and Naruto is a perfect replica of his father. How didn't I see it before? It's so obvious. Naruto looked in between the two, finding it hard to believe what he just heard. His eyes then rested on Kurama, and he asked, my parents. Kurama responded with a slow nod. He looked at Minato and whispered. Tutu-san. Minato responded with a smile and said, that's me, Naruto. Naruto felt his heart skip a beat upon hearing the man use his name. Tears welled up in the corners of his eyes as he looked at Kishina. Kachan. Kishina responded with a foxy smile much like his own, that's me, Sachi-kun. She then held her arms out and gestured for him to come to her. Now why don't you come give your Kachan a hug? Naruto's body froze on the spot. He so badly wanted to move, but now he was gripped by fear. The fear that as soon as he got close to them, they'd disappear like a cruel gain jutsu or mirage. Sayumi saw her at Taudo's distress and decided to give him a little help. She leaned in and muttered in his ear, go. Before giving him a little push. Naruto's feet steadily began to move forward, not once had his gaze broken from his mother's. His feet began to move faster and faster until he was running toward her with tears spilling out of his eyes. Kachan. He cried as he ran into her waiting arms and was engulfed in the motherly warmth he had been craving for so long. Ashina nuzzled the boy in her bosom as a few tears trickled from her eyes. My baby boy. I've waited so long to do this. Upon hearing that, Kurama averted his gaze and gritted his teeth. The blonde nuzzled into his mother's embrace all while crying tears of joy. Hey. He heard his father say, doesn't Tusan get any love? The man said with a small laugh. Naruto slowly let go of his mother and stood in front of his father. Before the blonde man could attempt to hug his son, he hunched over with a pained groan as his son punched him square in the gut. That was for the shitty life you put me through. He heard Naruto mutter before he was wrapped in a hug, and that's me forgiving you, Tusan. The Yandai Mei understood his son's actions and returned the hug before glancing up at his wife. He hits just like you, Kushi-chan. Ashina puffed her chest out in pride. As he should. I'd be disappointed if my boy ended up hitting like you, girly boy. She responded with a teasing grin. Kushi-chan. The man said in indignation and pouted. Naruto saw this and started to snicker. Ashina giggled in response and then turned her gaze toward the ravenette who was off to the side and admiring the scene. Well hello there my dear. She greeted and gained the heiress's attention. Who might you be? My Sachi's girlfriend. Sayumi's face instantly heated up, and she started to wave her hands in denial. No 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 no. She quickly tried to deny, but Kishina wasn't listening. Minato kun Our Sachi has a girlfriend. She said while pointing at Sayumi. Naruto stiffened upon hearing that and went cherry red in the face. Kurama, despite his downcast expression, couldn't help but stifle a snort of amusement and cover his mouth to keep from laughing. Eh? A girlfriend you say? Minato looked to where she was pointing and smiled. He released Naruto from the hug and patted him on the head. I have to congratulate you on landing such a catch, Sachi. You've got good taste, just like your old man. He said as he nudged his red-faced son with his elbow. Naruto became even redder and started to flail his hands in denial. No 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 no. You got it all wrong. She's not my girlfriend. Re Eilie now. Both parents drawled in an intrigued amusement. Then who might she be? They asked with matching amused expressions. Naruto went and stood beside the still blushing Sayumi. This here is Sayumi Wani-chan. She's someone who is very important to me and has been taking care of me ever since my apartment was destroyed almost two years ago. Sayumi's blush deepened upon hearing Naruto's introduction of her, but she nodded in affirmation all the same. We see. The parents drawled once more. Well then, we'll have to thank you Sayumi. It is good to know that our Sachi is in capable hands. And don't worry. With what we've seen, it won't be too long. Kishina teased offhandedly. Naruto and Sayumi stiffened upon hearing that before, Sayumi asked. Pardon me, Namikaze-sama. But what do you mean by what you've seen? Please dear, call me Kishina. As for the answer to your question. I think it is best if we go inside and talk. She then turned to her husband. Minato-kun. 
The blonde nodded at his wife before going to the gate and placing his hand on the lock and channeled some chakra into it. Everyone soon heard the sounds of humming before the lock load and the gate opened automatically. The blonde Hokage then ushered everyone inside, come now, we have a lot to talk about. Naruto's embarrassment was replaced by the excitement of seeing his parents home. He grabbed Sayumi's hand and dragged the girl inside, ignoring her pleas to slow down. Naruto's parents chuckled at the scene before Minato wrapped his arm around Kashina's waist before walking inside. They stopped and looked back to see Kurama still hanging back outside the walls with a downtrodden expression on his face. I meant everyone, you know. The beast heard the man call out. He looked up to see the couple gesturing for him to come inside. He took in a deep breath through his nose before burying his hands in his pockets and steadily walked inside. As he made it a few feet past the gates, he heard the same humming sounds from before and glanced over his shoulder to see the gates closing automatically. The party of five walked along the marble stone walkway through the sizable courtyard. The newcomers, namely Naruto and Sayumi, were taking in the view. There was lush green grass along the lawn with a few trees scattered haphazardly that provided shade. The house was a two-story modern mansion with creme walls with a dark blue shingle slant roof. Long double windows could be seen lining almost every wall, as well as a few smaller ones here and there. At the front were palm trees that were flanking the walkway up to the front door. They stopped at the front door where Naruto's parents went out in front. That's when Minato placed his hand on the doorknob and it glowed momentarily, similar to the gate. Welcome home, Naruto. They said in unison before Minato pushed the door open. Naruto was the first to walk inside and he was awed by the interior. Sayumi came in behind him and ended up sharing Naruto's reaction. The door opened to a large living room where the walls were painted in pearl white. The walls were adorned with multiple framed pictures of the couple as well as those of their friends like Tsum, Tsunade, the Inoshikacho and so on. The floor was made from hardwood that was polished to a shine with a white tray ceiling. The room had a grey sectional sofa with multicolored cushions on it. In front of the sofa was a transparent glass coffee table, and off to the side of this was a matching grey sofa chair. Attached to the wall in front of all of these was a fireplace that had a large framed photo of Minato in his Hokage outfit and Kishina when she was pregnant above it. The specific framed photo caught Sayumi's attention though. She walked up to it to get a better look. It was a photo of Kishina with her hand wrapped around a younger Makoto's shoulders. Both were smiling and making peace signs at the camera. She knew my mom. Sayumi silently muttered. Yes I did. Kishina said as she walked up behind the ravinette. She was the first friend I made when I came to live here in Kanoha. It didn't take long before she became my best friend. The Redeed's eyes dropped a bit, it made me sad when I learned that she was killed. This once again raised a question for Sayumi. But how? Not to sound offensive, Namikaze saw I mean Kishina-san, but you died before my clan was massacred. So how do you know that? In fact, how are you and Yondai Mei sama here? No offense taken, Sayumi-chan. To answer that, I think that it's best if we explain. Don't you think, Minato-kun? Yeah. Minato answered. Minato took the single chair while Naruto, Sayumi and Kishina took the sofa, with Kishina seated beside Naruto and Sayumi beside him. Kurama opted to stand and lean against the wall with his arms in his pockets. Now Naruto, Sayumi. The Yondai Mei started. I'm sure that you're both wondering how it is that myself and Kishina are here. Both teens in mention, nodded. Now before you ask, we are not alive. Well, not technically alive. Kishina added. Right. You see before we died, I managed to seal a fragment of both of our souls, along with Kurama inside the seal. So that we could at least meet our son at a later date. So while a small part of our souls are here and alive, the rest of us, both in spirit and body are still dead. When you created the Shadow Clones, Kurama channeled those fragments into them, allowing us to possess them and finally meet you in person. Minato explained. Naruto nodded his head at this explanation, but he still had a question. If you guys were always there in the seal, why did you wait so long to meet me? It's not that we wanted to wait this long to meet you, Sachi. It's because we couldn't. Kishina responded. Both Naruto and Sayumi raised an eyebrow at this, and Naruto asked, what do you mean? The process of transferring part of our souls into the seal, in the condition we were in at the time. Garama closed his eyes and turned his face away from the group. It was very draining. So to recuperate, our fragments went dormant. It wasn't until a little over a year ago before we came out of that dormant state. Kishina explained. A little over a year ago. Sayumi muttered to herself before she looked at the lady with realization. You two were dormant for 12 years. Both of them nodded before Minato continued. When we woke up, we could watch what was happening with our son from the seal. Kishina then turned to Sayumi. That's how we know what we know. So that's how you knew about my clan. Sayumi said in realization. You heard what I told, Naruto. Right. 
A small wry smile then appeared on the Ritid's face. Among other things. Sayumi's cheeks reddened up and she quickly looked away. Naruto. Minato called and got his son's attention. We, your mother and I, we saw your memories all of them. Naruto's eyes widened slightly, and he asked in a shaky tone. A hey, all of them? Minato hung his head in shame and answered, yes. Garama gnashed his teeth together and his fists tightened in his pockets. We saw everything those monsters did to you. Kishina said with anger and contempt in her tone. Kishina. Kishina's anger flared and her hair came to life, frightening Naruto and Sayumi. Don't start with me, Minato. Her hair waved menacingly behind her, like the tails of a pissed off yakai. You saw what they put our son through. You saw what they drove him to do, and you expect me to keep quiet about it. If it wasn't for the fact that I have limited time, Kanoha would be paying for what they did to my son. Minato looked at the raw anger in his wife's eyes before hanging his head and nodding in agreement. You're right. You're absolutely right he started in a dreary tone. For 12 years, the people that we gave our lives for, turned around and abused you. They may not have known that you were my son, but that shouldn't have mattered. They should have known that they were wrong. They may have changed in very recent times, but that doesn't absolve them of their actions. Tears formed in the blonde man's eyes and were freely dripping onto the floor. He held his head up and looked at Sayumi, not bothering to wipe away his tears. I may have thanked you before, but I thank you again for what you have done for my son. You gave him a home, cared for him, supported him, and you were there to protect him when he needed it. You did all of what we gesturing to himself and Kishina were unable to do. He then paused and wiped away his tears before continuing. For that, you will always have my gratitude, Sayumi. Mine as well. Kishina spoke up. If it weren't for you, our little boy would have been with us before his time. Sayumi nodded and then looked at the blonde Hokage. Kishina-san, Yondaime-sama. Well I do appreciate your gratitude, it is not needed. I did not save Naruto because I wanted gratitude nor reward. I only did what I knew was right. Even now, learning that he is your son makes no difference to me. He will always be my Naruto, and I have never regretted anything that I've ever done for him. Sayumi spoke with absolute certainty and conviction in her tone. In fact, if I were faced with the same decision a hundred times over, I would still make the same choice, every single time. Ashina couldn't stop the small smile that appeared on her face. You sure know how to pick them, Sachi. Naruto who had been silent throughout the conversation. He listened to what Sayumi had said and couldn't stop his eyes from glancing at her with pure admiration. Sayu-chan. Minato, like his wife and unlike Sayumi, saw the look Naruto sent Sayumi's way. Naruto. The blonde man called, gaining his son's attention. I've said all of that to say this. I'm sorry. I never wanted your life to turn out the way it did. You were supposed to be treated like a hero for holding Karama, not some abomination. With fresh tears in the corners of his eyes, the Jinchuriki's father locked his cerulean eyes with the son's matching pair. I'm sorry. He whispered, I'm so very sorry. He finished as he closed his eyes and hung his head in shame. He heard the sounds of footsteps approaching before they stopped right in front of him. You know, for a Hokage you really don't listen to what people say. I already told you that I forgave you, or do I need to punch you again to get my point across? Minato looked up at his son with surprise scattered across his face. He tried to speak but he was cut off. Naruto stooped in front of his father and looked the man directly in his eyes. Listen, Tusan. I won't lie and tell you that I was pleased when I learned that I had Karama sealed inside me and that he was the reason why my life used to be the way it was. A thoughtful expression came over his face. Well it was hell to live through, in a way, I'm actually thankful for it. His words threw everyone for a loop. What? You haven't been reading those pervy books that Karama has, have you? Sayumi asked with an incredulous look on her face. Naruto turned beet red and he got up before flailing his hands in denial. No 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 no. I ain't no masochist. Kishina snorted into her palm and responded in amusement. I see that you know the proper term, Sachi. Despite their crestfallen moods, Minato and Kurama's mouths puffed up in amusement before they covered their mouths to muffle their laughter. Naruto groaned and dragged his hand from the top of his face right down to his chin. He glanced at Sayumi, who had a hand over her mouth and was laughing as well. A tick mark appeared on the blonde teen's forehead, if you're all done being perverts. Can I please finish what I was gonna say? Everyone calmed down from their laughter and soon returned their attention to the Jinchuriki. Sorry Sachi. Please continue. Kishina responded. Finally. Ahem, as I was saying. I'm thankful for that life because it made me the person I am today. If I grew up being loved by everyone for no apparent reason, I'd be nothing but a spoiled brat with an ego that the five nations couldn't hold. He said that part with a small laugh. Plus it gave me Karama. I already accepted and forgave him, since he wasn't at fault, and ever since he's been doing everything he can to make up for what happened. 
So while I don't exactly like how it happened, I have to thank you for giving me someone I can call a Nikki. Garama's eyes widened slightly upon hearing that. A Nikki. Plus I would have never met Sayumi Wani Chan if things had gone differently. So even though your actions kind of backfired, I still forgive you. Naruto finished with his foxy grin. Minato looked at his son's grinning face and smiled. Thank you, son. The no problem, Tusan. I wouldn't be me if I wasn't able to forgive my precious people. Naruto said as he held out his fist. Minato chuckled as he got up and bumped fists with his son. I guess so. On the sofa, Kishina and Sayumi smiled at the scene, while Kurama had the ghost of a smile on his face. Kishina got up off the sofa and clapped her hands together. Now that that is out of the way. Why don't we show you two around the house? Sayumi nodded, while Naruto responded with, yes, please. After that, Minato and Kishina showed Naruto and Sayumi around. Kurama wasn't with them as he opted to stay behind and do his own thing. They started with the kitchen which shared the room with the living room. It had light hardwood flooring and white tray ceiling. The walls were lined with white shaker cabinets that matched perfectly with a couple of kitchen islands, as well as the light grey backsplash. The room next to it was the dining room. It had a long rectangular table with three seating positions on both sides, and one more seating position at both ends of the table. There was a total of seven bedrooms, excluding the bathrooms. Three on the first floor and four on the top floor which included the master bedroom. Also on the top floor was the library as well as Minato's personal study. At the back of the house, there was both a large pool that was currently devoid of water, as well as a personal onsen. But the two rover, Minato led them out to the courtyard. And now we are back to this very spacious and lovely courtyard, with a few trees around to provide shade, should anyone need it, and some benches under them as well, should you not want to lay on the grass. He then turned around and addressed his little group. Now that concludes our tour. If you have any questions, please direct them to my lovely Ritid assistant. Bishina blew a kiss at her husband before she looked at the two teens. As our handsome tour guide said. If you have any questions, please direct them to me. A sweat drop appeared on Naruto's forehead. Yeah, I could have done without seeing my parents flirt with each other. Sayumi did her best to hide her discomfort. Getting flashbacks of the rare times my parents actually showed that they loved each other. She fought back an involuntary shudder. Yeah, I could have done without remembering that. I actually have a question. Naruto spoke up. Yes, Sachi. Kishina acknowledged. How was the house so clean? You guys were gone for over a decade and no one was living there. So how was everything so clean and not full of dust? The blonde teen asked. You can thank Karama for that. Once we told him that we wanted to meet you, he decided to have us meet you in our home as opposed to somewhere else. So while he was training you too, he'd have a few clones come here and clean things up. Kishina explained. I'll have to thank the furball when I see him again. Naruto responded. I have one also. Sayumi piped up. Shoot. Kishina responded. Why did you have so many bedrooms, aside from yours and Naruto's? A small blush came over Kishina's face, and she looked at Minato who had a matching one, and was rubbing the back of his head. Well, we were actually planning for a bigger family before things went bad. Sachi-kun here was just the start. She answered, feeling a little flustered. A pink hue appeared on Sayumi's cheeks. Oh. Kishina then looked at the sky and saw that the sun was beginning its descent. Well, it seems that the day is coming to an end. How about a nice family dinner to end the day? Sayumi and Naruto's stomachs instantly signaled their agreement. Gruul. Leaving the teens blushing in embarrassment. Yeah, I think some dinner would do us good right about now. Naruto said as he rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. In that case then, Sayumi. Would you mind giving me a hand in the kitchen? Kishina asked. Oh, okay. Sayumi responded. Minato then walked up behind Naruto and placed his palm on his son's shoulder and addressed him. Well since the ladies will be busy, let's go out to the training field. I have something to show you. Okay, Tusan. Both blondes then turned and left for the training ground. We'll be back soon. The blonde Kage called out as they left. Time skip dinner. We're back. Minato called out. We're in the dining room. Kishina responded. The father-son duo walked to the dining room and along the way, their noses were assaulted with the mouth-watering aroma of well-prepared meal. It smells like the ladies really outdid themselves. Naruto nodded in agreement. Upon entering the dining room, they were greeted with a drool-inducing sight. On the dining table was an assortment of different foods. Buttermilk fried chicken, short ribs with creamy polenta, steak fajitas, onigiri, jasmine rice, plus Naruto's favorite. Raymond. Idadakamasu. Naruto exclaimed as he was about to attack the food with no mercy. Hold it. The two females called, stopping the jinchuriki in his tracks. Did you wash up? They asked in sync. Naruto sputtered, well, no. But the food. Then wait. 
Now go get cleaned up, Mr. Biba, Kasan, Wani Chan. Now, Naruto. Both ordered. Okay, okay, fine. The blonde then walked off grumbling about bossy mothers and sisters. Minato chuckled at the scene but stopped when he saw the look his wife was giving him. Hishina pointed in the direction of the bathrooms. Get. Minato put his hands up in defeat before leaving to clean up. He may just be possessing a clone's body, but that doesn't mean he gets to be a slob. Minato and Naruto came back to see everyone there. Minato sat at one end of the table, and Kishina took the other end. Kurama sat by himself on the right side of the table, while Sayumi and Naruto sat beside each other on the left side. Naruto then stood up from his seat to address his little family. Before we sit down to enjoy this food that my Ka-san and Sayumi Wani-chan has prepared for us. I would like to give Kurama my gratitude. With everything he has done, from making the preparations for this day, to allowing me to meet my parents. It makes me happy and proud to be your Jinchuriki. So thank you Aniki. Kurama looked at the blonde teen, and he could see the sincerity in his eyes. Why do you keep calling me that? I don't deserve it. Kurama replied in a solemn tone as he cast his eyes downward. It's because you do deserve it. Kurama, I know that what happened 13 years ago still weighs on your conscience. Especially what happened to me, that's why you've been working so hard to make up for it, by being an ally to the village as well as what you've been doing for me. The old man may never have said it out loud, but he has forgiven you for what happened because he knows you're not at fault. Hishina then spoke up. The same goes for myself and Minato-kun. We don't blame you for what happened to us either. Kurama looked at Minato and saw the man nod in affirmation. Sayumi then spoke up. None of us blame you Kurama, and all of us has forgiven you. So I'm going to ask, as your Amato. You too, huh? Kurama interjected. Sayumi giggled. What were you expecting? You've been there for me as much as you have with Naruto. So is your Amato, I am asking you to forgive yourself and to let yourself move on from what happened. Kurama let her word sink in, he then cast his eyes over everyone else and saw that they were all being very genuine with their words. He closed his eyes and let a small smile creep onto his face. Okay, and thank you, all of you. You really know how to make a Biju feel special. Damn right, we do. Naruto responded before he took his seat. Now let's eat. Everyone gave hearty chuckle at the blonde teen before they started to eat. Flashback end. After that, we enjoyed the evening as if we were one big happy family. We ended up talking and sharing stories right up until their time ran out and they had to go back to the afterlife. Naruto explained with a small sigh. That must have been very hard on you. Hiruzen remarked. It was, but I understood that they couldn't stay any longer. They already had their time extended past what is was supposed to be. And Nikki told me that they were originally only meant to last for about a half hour before they had to go back. He extended that time by giving up four tails of his own chakra and gave two to each to make them last longer. Well I wish that they could have stayed longer, I'm just grateful for the time that I did get to spend with them. They did leave me with this though. The teen then took off his wrist locket and opened it. Inside the locket was picture of everyone on that day. They were outside in the courtyard, Naruto had his arm wrapped around Sayumi's torso with a big grin plastered on his face. Sayumi had her hand wrapped around Naruto's torso with her head was resting on his shoulder, and she had a small smile on her face. Minato and Kishina were in similar poses, only difference being, Minato had a small smile on his face, while Kishina was making the peace sign at the camera. Hirama could be seen beside a little off to the side, leaning against a tree with his arms folded and a small smile on his face, and he was winking at the camera. That's a beautiful picture, Naruto. Hiruzen commented. Yeah. My folks decided to take one, since aside from when mom was pregnant with me, we don't have any other family pictures. We ended up staying there for the rest of the week after that, and we even still go there from time to time when we have some downtime. That's good to hear, Naruto, and for what it's worth, I always intended to tell you, it's just that I was bound by my word to your parents to tell you at a time I believed was right. It's no problem, old man. We understand. Naruto responded. Hiruzen nodded before saying, as for Jiraiya, I'll have to ask that you not hold it against him for not being there for you as he should have. It's just that with his position in the village as spymaster, he couldn't stay with you even though he wanted. Naruto nodded and replied, I understand that as well. Tusan and Kasan said the same thing, though they did argue that he could have at least let me know that he was my godfather, even if he couldn't stay very long. But I can agree with. I'll just ask you to take it easy when you do meet him. The old man. Oh, don't worry. I'll take it very easy with him. Naruto replied in a very innocent tone. For some reason, that didn't make Hiruzen feel any better. Anyhow, that is what I had called you here for. If there is nothing else, then you are free to go. He then looked at Kurama, thank you again, Kurama. The beast nodded before poofing back to the seal. Naruto and Sayumi got out of their seats. 
Later, old man. Naruto said before they left. After they left. Hiruzen summoned two shadow clones to take care of any paperwork that was around, while he leaned back in his chair to enjoy his student's latest book. Haha. <laughs> Time skip one month. Scarecrow in position. The Cyclops radioed in from his position from his spot behind a tree. He peered around it and spotted his target. Target is sighted and is moving to your location, do you copy? Vixen, copy. The Ravenette replied from her position atop a roof. I'm, copy. The Blue Net responded from her positon on a roof across from Sayumi. Hitsun, copy. The Blonde replied from his position in an alleyway. He peered around the corner. Target is heading my way. Moving to intercept and capture. Keep eyes on the target and move to capture should she slip by me. Three calls of Roger. Came in over his radio. Naruto stepped out into the street and the cat stopped in its tracks. For a few seconds, Jinchuriki and Cat had a silent stare down before Naruto knelt down and held out his hand. Now, now Tora, time to go home. The cat didn't seem to like that idea and turned up its nose at the blonde with a huff. Naruto fake pouted, ow, now that's not nice. I'm sure Hina-chan wouldn't want to hold such a rude little kitty. Now would she? The cat stiffened and looked at Naruto with an almost pleading expression. I know, I know. That lady is horrible. But how about this? In exchange for being a good kitty, I let Hina-chan hold you and we'll see if we can get your owner to not kill you with affection. The cat seemed to be weighing her options, displayed by the tilting of her head, before she nodded at the blonde and jumped into his arms. Seeing this, the rest of his team came out of hiding and joined the blonde. Anata made a come here motion with her hands and called in a baby voice, come here, Tora-chan. Tora bounded out of Naruto's arms with a happy meow and landed in Hinata's arms, before settling in and laid down with a purr of contentment. And just like that, the mission to capture the savage beast is complete. Sayumi said dramatically. One of Tora's eyes popped open and glared at Sayumi for the insult. Keep looking at me like that and we'll see what a fried Tora looks like. Sayumi threatened as she got right in the cat's face. Tora opened her other eye and gave Sayumi a look that said, go ahead and try. With a little cat-like smirk. A tick mark appeared on the Ichiha's brow and a heat haze appeared around her fist. Don't tempt me, furball. Now, Sayumi. Leave the poor cat alone. She didn't do anything for you to be threatening her. Hanada lightly chided. Sayumi's eyebrow twitched, didn't do anything. Didn't you see my face the first time we went after her? She used me as a damn scratching post. Sayumi asked in an incredulous tone. Now that was your fault and you know it. Hinata then nuzzled the cat against her face. Isn't that right, Tora-chan? She cooed in a baby voice. The cat just mewled in content and sent a mocking look toward Sayumi, who was very tempted to burn the hair off her four-legged tormentor. Good work team. Let's go put in our report before someone kills our target. Kakashi spoke with a light chuckle as he watched the scene with the irate Ichiha. I'm on one Ichan. Oh and no plotting against Tora-chan. The blonde boy said with a small laugh as he walked beside her. Anada was in front of them and Sayumi could see the beepy smirk the little devil was sending her way. She gave the cat the I'm watching you hand gesture. The cat just rolled its eyes and went back to nuzzling Hinata. Hokage's office. Team 7 walked into the office to see the Hokage as well as the fire daimyo's wife, Madam Shijimi. She's an average height woman with a corpulent figure. She has dark brown hair that she keeps in three separate poofs. She seemed to be the spendthrift type, given the style of clothing she was wearing, as well as the amount of makeup she had on, as well as the amount of jewelry she had. Mission to capture and return Tora is a success. Kakashi reported. Poor baby. Did you miss your mama? The woman quickly rushed to where Hinata was and scooped the cat out of her arms and hugged it tightly against her ample bosom. The cat was once again fighting to be freed from its overly affectionate owner. Sayumi was silently enjoying the torture the cat was going through. She saw the cat take a quick glance at her, so she quickly mouthed the words, Karma's a bitch, ain't it? Tora was too preoccupied with trying to escape to show Sayumi her response. Luckily for her and much to Sayumi's chagrin, Naruto chose now to make good on his deal with the cat. Madam Shijimi, if I may have a quick word with you. Naruto spoke up. The rather plump woman halted her affection torture of her cat to address the young man. Yes dear. If I may say something in regard to why your cat always runs away. The dignitary nodded in response. Please know that I mean no offense by what I'm about to say next, but you are the reason for this behavior. The other occupants of the room went dead silent, all wanting to hear where this would go. The lady gave the young shinobi a slightly narrowed gaze. Explain. Without a hint of hesitance in his tone, the young man answered. You see, Madam Shijimi. Cats on a whole do love affection, but not in the amounts that you're giving. When you show her affection in the manner you do, she feels trapped and so feels the need to escape. 
If you don't mind, I'd like to ask that my teammate, Hinata Hyuka, show you how Tor likes to be given affection. The lady nodded and handed the cat to the young man, who in turn handed the cat to his blue net teammate. Hinata used one of her hands to support the cat from underneath, before using the other hand to gently stroke the cat's fur. The change was almost instant. The cat went from wanting to escape as if its life depended on it, to purring in content. Seeing the young man's point, she asked to have her cat back and decided to follow the young lady's example, and wouldn't you know it, the cat was nuzzling up to the woman's ample chest and was so relaxed that it fell asleep in the woman's arms. Madame Shijimi smiled before looking back at the two young shinobi. I'll have to thank you two for showing me where I went wrong. The two genin had the decency to look flustered. It was no problem, Madame Shijimi. Hinata responded. The daimyo's wife then looked toward the Hokage, I request that these two get a little bonus for their troubles, in fact, give the whole team a little bonus. For they have finally stopped my little baby from running away. Hiruzen nodded at the lady. I'll see to it. The lady nodded in response before moving towards the exit. Bye, bye now. And thank you again. She said before she left. Sayumi's eyes trailed the cat as it was leaving. Just as the cat was going through the door, it opened its eyes and gave the Ichiha look that clearly said, can't touch this. Sayumi gnashed her teeth together in annoyance. Someday soon, you little devil. But the lady now gone, Hiruzen addressed the team. Good work Team 7. Not only have you once again completed the Tora mission in record time, but you've also gotten rid of it altogether. You can expect a nice bonus waiting on you in your payment. Thus doing our job old man. Naruto responded, with the rest of the team nodding in agreement. That is all for today. Be here at the regular time tomorrow for more missions. You are dismissed. Hi, Hokage-sama. The team chorused before they left the office. Outside the tower, Kakashi bid his team farewell before flickering away. So girls, you wanna go get something to eat? Naruto suggested. Sure. They answered, before Sayumi added, no Raymon though. Making the blonde pout. I wasn't gonna suggest it. There's this place that I've wanted to try out for a little while now. Really? Hinata asked. Yeah, follow me. The blonde teen said before took off toward the rooftops, with his team right behind him. A few minutes later the team came to a stop at a dango stand. Dango? Hinata asked with a raised eyebrow. Yeah, Nichan suggested to me a while back, but I didn't get a chance to try it out yet. The boy answered as he entered the stand. As the team sat in the booth, Hinata asked, Sayumi suggested this place to you. Not me. The ravenette responded. That would be me. A female voice answered. Before they knew it, a smoke bomb went off and when it dissipated, the girl saw their male teammate's face being pressed into the rather ample bust of purple-haired Kinoichi, who was wearing a mesh bodysuit and a tan-colored trench coat. MMMNF. MMMF. The blonde teen gave out as he struggled to escape the woman's grasp. Um, Ni-chan, would you mind letting Aratado go before he suffocates? The Ichiha asked, feeling a little peeved. The purple-haired Kinoichi saw the ravenette's annoyance and smirked in response and stuck out her tongue, before finally letting the team go. While Naruto was gasping for air, the Kinoichi leaned back in the booth and spoke up, long time no see Amado. How's the genin life been treating you? It's been good so far. Though we've only been doing those dreadfully boring D-ranks for a full month now. If I have to walk those black and white mutts one more time, I swear that a few of them are gonna go missing. Anko laughed at her young charge, and asked. You met Roger and Anita, huh? Yes. The ravenette exclaimed. Like seriously, who the hell needs that many dogs? Ow, oh, they weren't that bad, one e chan Naruto spoke up, having finally caught his breath. Speak for yourself, Ataudo. You weren't the one that was dragged through mud and left looking like a walking mud pile. Naruto snickered as he recalled that memory. Yeah, they did you pretty bad that day. The boy said, making the older Kanoichi snicker as well, much to the ravenette's annoyance. Anada was a little lost here. Not that she didn't recall what they were talking about, which to be honest, was pretty funny. But because she was still lost as to who the older Kinoichi was, and why were they calling her Nichan. Excuse me, Kinoichi-san, but who are you? She finally asked. The woman pouted, ow, you don't know me. She then looked at Naruto. Ataudo, shame on you for not telling your girlfriend about me. Naruto and Hinata sputtered in embarrassment with a little pink on their faces. It's not like that and you know it, Anko Nichan. And yeah, I might have forgotten to mention you. The boy replied in a sheepish manner. Anko swatted the boy upside his head, shame on you. She chided as the boy rubbed the top of his head. She then looked back at the Hyuga. Well since my dunderhead of an Atado forgot to introduce me, let me do the honors. Ahem, I am the sexy and spectacular Anko Midarashi, special Jonin, one of the T's best and the older sister of these two brats. Anada extended her hand over the table, nice to meet you, Midarashi-san. 
Anko reached over and shook the heiress's hand. Same to you, kid. And just call me Anko or Anko Ni Chan, either is fine by me. Okay, Anko san. The blue net responded. Meh, close enough. The woman then leaned back in the booth and swung one of her arms around the blonde Jinchiriki. So, what brings you brats to my side of the village? We felt like getting something to eat, so I brought them here since I haven't tried the food here yet. Naruto explained. Oh. A small mocking smile appeared on Anko's face. Finally ready to see the Dango is the superior to your little washed up Raymond. Hell no. Raymond will always be the best to me. The most this will be is a close second. The blonde shot back. Tell me that, after you've tried the food of the gods, brat. Oh, I've already tried the food of the gods, back at Ichirakus. The teen responded with a beepy grin. A tick mark appeared on Anko's brow. Why you little? And so began the heated debate to decide which of their favorite foods are better. Anata leaned over to Sayumi and asked. Are they always like this? Sayumi responded in a nonchalant tone. Pretty much. It's just how they show that they care for each other. Hey take that back. Raymond is not toilet water. As unorthodox as they make it look. Sayumi explained. The waiter came to the booth and saw the blonde and special Jonin budding heads with sparks flying in between them. He looked at the other two Kanoichi, Hinata shrugged and Sayumi motioned for him to do his job. The black-haired man shrugged and cleared his throat. Ahem, are you all ready to order? Naruto and Anko stopped and looked at the waiter with an almost predatory gleam in their eyes. Yes. They answered in sync, frightening the poor man. I'll have Naruto started, but was cut off. Oh no you don't. I'll be ordering for you, so shut up. Anko told the teen before looking back the frightened waiter. I'll take 20 fruit and natto. She then pointed to Naruto, this little shit will take 20 pork and beef. Make it snappy. The special Jonin ordered before leaning back in her seat. The man hastily wrote down the order before taking a few moments to recompose himself. After calming himself, he then looked to the girls. What would your orders be? Five curry, for me please. Hinata responded. I'll take five bakken. Sayumi replied. And I'll take ten hanami. A voice ordered from behind. Everyone turned around to see the Scarred Academy teacher walking up to them. Ordering without me, Hibi-chan. The man lightly chided. A small blush appeared on Anko's face as she pouted, never, Haruka-kun. You can blame piss for brains here for riling me up. Boy. Naruto fumed with smoke coming out of his ears. Haruka chuckled as he slid into the booth beside Anko and captured her lips in a chaste kiss. Anko wrapped her hand around the back of Haruka's head and pulled him in to deepen the kiss. She was about to slip her tongue into his mouth before. Ahem. Now is that all the orders? The waiter asked. Anko broke the kiss before flipping off the waiter for interrupting. Yes, that'll be all. Haruka answered. The man nodded and left their booth. Haruka then looked back to his former students and saw their red faces. So what's up guys? He asked as if he wasn't about to French his girlfriend. The three genin looked at him as if he had grown a second head. Um, Haruka-sensei. Next time, keep all of that, indoors. I'd rather not watch Anko Nichan swap spit with you. Sayumi deadpanned. Anko draped her hands around Aruka's neck and leaned her head on his shoulder. Jealous much. Sayumi was not amused and showed it be a flipping the bird at the older Kanoichi, which in turn made the dangle lover laugh. I haven't seen you guys since team placements. So how's the genin life been treating ya? The scarred man asked. Dust D ranks and training so far. I'm not one to complain, but I feel as if I'm wasting my talent doing chores around the village. Hinata answered. I understand Hinata, but you have to remember that D-ranks are used to ease genins into the life of a shinobi by doing menial tasks. Iruka replied. Yeah, yeah, we know that, Iruka sensei But come on, you know what the three of us are capable of doing. It's a waste to not at least give us something challenging. Naruto argued. They do have a point, Iruka-kun. Considering who trained them and all. Anko added. Hinata's eyes briefly widened. You know about him? The old furball. Yeah, I know about him. In fact, he's the reason I met them. Anko replied while pointing a thumb at Naruto and Sayumi. Oh. Hinata replied with intrigue. Yeah. The redeed was roaming through my territory, that's the forest of death if you didn't know. Anyway he was roaming through the place as if he owned it, well considering who he is, that's not so far off the mark. Anko said with a small laugh. From inside the seal, Kurama had a good chuckle at that, having recalled that encounter. I decided to let him know who was the top dog and tried to chase him out. Keyword tried. He ended up running circles around me the whole time, all while laughing his ass off and pissing me off. We were at that game of cat and mouse for about three hours before these brats showed up looking for him. The game ended, he gave me a half-assed apology, and we exchanged intros. The brats and I hit it off pretty well after that, and soon we considered each other surrogate siblings. 
I learned about the furball not long after that. Haruka-kun knows as well since the brats and Hokage-sama trusted him enough to put him in the loop. The special Jonin explained. The waiter had come back with their orders just as Anko finished her recollection. But more on that later, if you want. Anko said as an almost manic grin came over her face. Now it's time to eat. Ready to eat your words, brat. Naruto cracked his knuckles in a dramatic fashion and gave Anko a challenging smirk. Only if you are, Ni-chan. As if one cue, both of them dug into their meals with a gluttonous vigor. The other three occupants of the booth, sweat dropped at their behavior. I'm sure I taught him better than that. Sayumi thought with a deadpan expression. With nothing left to do, the Genin and Chunin shrugged and began eating their meals. Ten minutes later, they were all done with their meals while Anko and Naruto were cleaning their teeth with the sticks. I'll have to admit that these are really good, Ni-chan. Naruto said. See. Told you they were good. Dude, still not as good as Raymon. The boy said with a teasing grin on his face. Anko huffed and folded her arms under her bust. Whatever it tauto. To each their own. The special Jonin relented with a small pout, making the others laugh at her behavior. After this, the group paid for the meal, before departing from the establishment. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hinata said, as she was about to leave for home. Hold on, Hina-chan. I'll walk with you, if you don't mind. The blonde offered. Hinata gave him sweet smile. Sure, I don't mind. Alright. Naruto then fell in step with Hinata as they parted from the group. He then looked back and waved at them, later guys. I'll see you back at home, one chan He called out before walking away with Hinata in tow. Sayumi waved back at him and watched as he disappeared into the crowd with Hinata. Her eyes dropped and she let out a small sigh. An arm wrapped around her shoulder and a mouth went close to her ear. You may want to make up your mind soon, Imato. From the looks of it, you may not have a lot of time left to choose. The elder Kanoichi said. Sayumi didn't answer, nor did she really hear when the couple bid her farewell and left. She stood there for a few more moments, before sighing once more and took the short route home, via Shunshin. But Naruto and Hinata. The trek from the Dango shop to the Hyuga compound was spent with idle chatter between the two teens. When they arrived at the gate, Hinata bid her blonde friend farewell. Thanks for walking me home, Naruto-kun. Eh, it was no problem, Hina-chan. Enjoy the rest of your day. The blonde replied. As he was about to turn and leave, he felt something soft touch his cheek for a few moments before it pulled back. His eyes widened and his face reddened as he realized what happened. Before he could say anything, he saw Hinata quickly run inside the compound. He stood there for a few moments, with a dumbfounded expression on his face. He put his hand to the spot that she kissed, and a small smile came to his face before he turned and left for home. With Hinata. Hinata ran into the compound and made a beeline through her house, not even realizing that she had ran past her little sister, who watched her one Isan run by with a questioning look on her face. Hinata ran into her room and quickly locked the door before she put her back against it and caught her breath. Did I really just do that? She took a few deep breaths to calm herself and get her bearings back. A red hue appeared on her face, and she brought her fingers up to her lips. A small smile adorned her face, it may not have been an actual kiss, but she still liked the feel of his skin on her lips. A stray thought came to mind, making her wonder what it would be like to really kiss him. On his lips, on his neck, down his muscle chest and abs. She kept picturing what his reactions would be like, and soon got a little too hot under the collar. She rubbed her thighs together to try and cool the ever-building heat before sighing in frustration. Great. Now I need another cold shower. She soon disrubbed and stepped into her bathroom for some much-needed cooling down. Next day Hokage Tower. Good morning, Team 7. The aged leader greeted. Morning, Hokage-sama. The team replied. I already have a full day's worth of deer ranks already picked out for you. The old man then gestured to stack of mission scrolls at the front of this table. The members of Team 7 all gave the Hokage a deadpan expression, except Kakashi who wasn't really paying attention. I don't want to complain, Hokage-sama, but we could use a more challenging mission. Sayumi suggested, with her teammates immediately agreeing. Hmm. The old man leaned back in his chair, as if he were pondering his decision. He then looked at Kakashi, do you think they are ready to take on harder missions? Hi. They've already completed the required amount of D-ranks to move on. And not the sound informal Hokage-sama, but come on, you know that sticking them with these chores are a waste of time. Hiruzen nodded at this, for the Jonin did have a point. He knew that this team could have taken C-ranks right out the academy, for they had the skill to do so. The only thing they really needed was the experience, and that went hand in hand with tougher missions. With his decision made, he pressed the little button on his desk to open the intercom to the reception area. Send in the client. A few moments later, a gray-haired, bespectacled man with a circular beard walked into the room. 
The most noticeable thing about him though, was the heavy scent of cheap sake he had on him. These are the ninja that are supposed to protect me. The man stopped mid-sentence, before taking a swig of his half-full sake bottle, a couple of brats that I'm gonna have to babysit and a half-blind pervert. The hairs on the back of his neck stood at attention, and he felt his heart speed up when he heard someone whisper in his ear. You'll find that we are more than capable of protecting you. The old man whipped around in fright to see that there was no one behind him. He turned back around to see that everyone was still in their places. Though if he was keen enough, he would have noticed to the subtle shaking of their shoulders. Naruto whispered to Sayumi. Isn't it illegal to attempt murder on our clients? The old guy ain't dead, is he? Sayumi whispered back. This here is Tazuna, a bridge builder from Wave who hired us to escort him back to his home, as well as to protect him and his family, until he finishes the bridge he is currently working on. Sounds simple enough. The only thing we'll really have to worry about are bandits, but with me and my team there, that won't be much an issue. The Cyclops commented. Yeah. Bandits. The bridge builder thought with some apprehension. The older civilian's nervousness was not missed by the shinobi in the room though. There's something that this guy ain't telling us. Naruto mentally remarked. Agreed. And it seems that the others have noticed as well. Best be on your guard when you leave, kid. The beast responded. Naruto mentally nodded at his aniki. How long would it take for you to finish this bridge, Tazuna-san? The silver-haired jonin asked. With the right help, two weeks at the least, three weeks at the most. The bespectacled man replied. The Kashi nodded at him before turning to his team. It's a week's journey to wave at civilian's pace, so pack supplies for at least a month and meet at the main gate in an hour. Hi, Sensei. The genin responded before they left to get ready. As they were leaving the tower, Naruto spoke to his two teammates. You two saw that, right? The fact that he obviously left something out of the mission details. Yeah, pretty much. Sayumi replied. I saw that as well. He seemed nervous when Kakashi Sensei mentioned bandits, as if he knew that there would be more than that. Hinata responded. Naruto nodded at his teammates. Best to be on our guard at all times when we get out there. We don't know what we're really gonna be up against. Naruto told them. Yes, I'm gonna have to bring that with me. Dang, didn't want to have to use it so early too. Sayumi said with a huff as she folded her arms underneath her bust. Her teammates chuckled at her. When they exited the tower, they parted ways to go get ready. One hour later the main gate. The team arrived at the gate at the appointed time to see their sensei and the client there waiting for them. Seeing that we're all here, I think it's time we headed out. The silver-haired jonin said, before he raised his eyebrow at this team's travel packs, or lack thereof. Um, where are your packs? The gen and all took a scroll out of their supply pouch. Right here. Sayumi responded. Using storage scrolls, eh? Good idea. None of you wouldn't happen to have a spare one on you by chance? The jonin asked. Yeah. Naruto answered, before he took an empty one from his pouch and tossed it to his sensei. Thanks. The older man said before he quickly stored his pack in it and placed it in his pouch. Let's get going already. The sooner we get back, the sooner I can complete the bridge. The elder civilian complained. Ma, ma, Tazuna-san. We're heading out now. The jonin told the old man before he looked at his team. We're heading out. Diamond formation. The man ordered. The genins nodded before taking their places. Naruto got in front of Tazuna, Hinata took the rear, Sayumi flanked the man on his left, and Kakashi took up the right. Alright, let's move. Kakashi ordered, before they finally began their journey. As he and his team moved with the client, he spotted a black sword sheath on Sayumi's back that had red swirl designs on it. He looked at the handle and saw similar designs decorating it. How did she get that? Was his unasked question. The end. So how was this part, I hope you like it. And if you like it share this part with your friends and like the video too. And don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily awesome fanfiction. Okay it's time for me to go. Bye bye.